Hi, I'm Paul from DIY Plastering and I'm just going to show you some very basic techniques for skimming. Most importantly, you need to make sure the wall of your plastering isn't too porous. If it is, it will suck the moisture out of the plaster that you put on the wall so fast that it, well, you won't have a chance to work it before it dries. So do control the suction, either by water or by using PVA. Once you've done that, you have some plaster on your trail, do the top border first. I'm just going to do a, a little bit in the middle of the wall. Normally when you're doing, a, doing it for real, obviously you'd start from the right through from the left, all the way through to the right and across the bottom. Um, but just so you don't get bored, I'm literally just going to pick a little bit in this middle. So I've got some on my trail, I'm doing this top border. Working right to those edges. And all you're looking for is a flat even coat. Don't worry too much about a few small holes or ridges or anything like that. As long as it's flat and even, that's, that's the main thing for the first coat. It needs to be about two millimeters thick, no, no more than that. So now you've got some on your trowel. Keep it flat to the floor, take it to the wall, and then you're just going to gradually flatten this top edge of your trowel in closer and closer to the wall as the plaster reduces off your trowel. I'm slightly turning it round to overlap where I overlap that top border. Now I'm taking my trowel off and I'm going to use my trowel now just to flatten what I put on. So with a fairly flat trowel, 10 15 millimeters on this leading edge here, firm pressure just to flatten through everything that we put on. So if you get that slightly wrong and you flatten your trowel in too quick too soon, you're going to put it on really thick, and then you might realise overcompensate and scrape up there and kind of leaving it thick and thin and thick and it's all kind of very messy. Anything like that, just come back here and have a fairly flat trowel. So this leading edge here will be about 10 or 15 millimetres away. Combine that with firm pressure, maintain that flatness all the way through. You just start to push all the highs into the lows and gradually fill all of those hollows in. So it's literally combine the flat trail with firm pressure. If you struggle and you start to kind of scrape, what it means is that this top edge of your trail is coming away from the wall. So if that happens, just flatten it in a bit. So just go very slowly and watch the gap between the trowel and the wall. Firm pressure. Any bits of grit, like I've got here, get rid of them straight away. That's also a big tip to keep clean when you're mixing up and everything, keep everything clean because the bits of grit are, are real and real. Some more on your trowel. All the way through. From left through to right, when you're happy with that section, move on to the next. Don't worry about a few trail marks. All you're really worried about is bulges. So you won't want to leave a kind of massive big bulge in the middle of the wall just to flat even coat. All the way through to the right hand side, all the way across the bottom. When you're happy with that, that's your first coat done, then the next stage is to flatten that first coat off. Give your trail a quick clean. And the sole purpose of stage two to flatten it off is to knock the ridges back because if you don't knock those ridges back and they've dried when you come to second coat, your second coat is going to have to come out to that thickness plus to cover them and you could start to end up with a very bumpy wall. So very quick stage, but a very important one just to make sure you flatten it all through. Um, so very quickly, just run your trowel over. Now this can only happen when it's gone tacky. So if it's not tacky, then, then don't, don't do it because you won't probably see any real improvement. Sometimes you might need to leave it for five minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, it just depends. Every wall is different. Depends how quickly the moisture's been sucked out of it into the backing coat behind. So that's the first coat done, the flattening off done. Now I'm going to put the second coat on. With the second coat, it's exactly the same, but it's a bit thinner. So smaller amounts on your trowel, and you're looking at putting something like a millimetre thickness on. Again, flat even coat. Now, you do need to push fairly firmly because if you don't push hard enough, what tends to happen when you run your trowel over, you just leave a series of holes there and it just kind of drags up there. So you need to push hard enough to make sure you force the plaster along the whole length of your trowel and into those holes. So firm pressure. Then when you're happy with that section, move on to the next one. So again, if I don't put the pressure on, no matter how many times I just kind of go up there stroking it, I don't put pressure on leaving those hollow areas, so loads of pressure, 
flattish trail. So when I say flattish trail, not totally flat, this leading edge about 10, 15 millimeters away. Combine that with firm pressure. Don't worry about your trail marks, anything like that. As long as you haven't got too many holes, then just kind of move on. Um, whatever you do, make sure you keep it nice and flat. So firm pressure, flattish trail, just to make sure you get everything on there nice and flat. Once you've done that second coat, again, cover the whole wall all the way through to the right hand side. And then you give your trail a clean again. And instead of having your hawk, you have your brush. You can then use that to keep your trail clean. You can use it to clean all the corners, like so. Make sure you keep all those nice and clean and tidy. If you're running your trail along, when you're doing this next stage, which is stage four, and it, the plaster tears, then you've got your brush and you can flick a little bit of water at it. But don't flick water at it unless you need it, because otherwise if you have too much water, you'll have this wet slurry on the wall, which you won't really be able to do anything with. So only use the water if you need it. Um, this is quite a thorough stage because you need to check. As your trail passes over each section of the wall, look for hollow areas or holes. So if you've got a, say you've got a hole there, and you see it, don't move on to the next section until you've filled it because the next time you go back over this stage five, it will be too firm to fill all these hollow areas in. So make sure you literally work some plaster into them, fill all those hollow areas, all the way through, from left through to right. Um, your arm will be aching quite a bit by the time you've done that one. Really, quite a bit of firm pressure to really work that plaster around. Again, don't worry about the trail marks because the harder you push, sometimes the more trail marks you may leave. Don't worry about that because as long as you're keeping it flat and you fill in your hollow areas, those trail marks will just come out later on. Um, that's in stage five. So when it's um, ready for stage five is basically when the trail marks come out. If they don't come out, it's probably just a bit too wet, so leave it a bit longer. Um, so best thing is take the trail across, try it. If they easily come out, then you're probably ready to do it. If not, just uh, leave it a bit longer. Um, and then there's, you can go over it another time if you need to, to fill, sort any last remaining blemishes out. Um, that is a very, very quick run down of plastering. Basically, don't aim for results of stage six or stage one. You've got all these different stages and it gets easier as the setting process um, starts to happen. You're able to probably achieve what you want a bit more as long as you control the suction. Um, anyway, if you want any more help, come and see us at www.diyplastering.co.uk.